Virgin Hyperloop One and DP World have teamed up to create a firm that will build rapid high-speed cargo transport systems. What does this mean for the UAE? This is Inside AB, my name is Jeremy Lawrence and I'm joined here in the studio by Bern de Boosman. Okay, Burns, you were at the press conference last week where this announcement was made. Tell us what was said. So at this announcement, uh, Sir Richard Branson, who's the chairman of the board of Virgin Hyperloop One and DP World uh, chairman as well, they announced that this new firm, which is called DP World Cargo Speed, is going to use the Hyperloop, the tube-based electromagnetic transport system that everyone's talking about, to transport cargo around the world. Now, it'll do so very quickly, up to speeds at up to 1,000 kilometers an hour. So according to Sultan bin Sulayem, who's, of course, the, the chairman of DP World, that means, in theory, you could get cargo from anywhere in the world to anywhere in the world in the space of 14 hours. So for a company like DP World, which is involved in shipping and ports, that's extremely significant, 14 hours anywhere in the world. Wow, wow. Okay, so specifically for uh, logistics, what does this mean? Well, I spoke to the chief technical officer of Virgin Hyperloop One, and he, and he was telling me that Essentially, the benefit of this is it moves at the speed of flight, but for the cost of trucking. So, I mean, the implications of that in the logistics sector are enormous. So, for example, you could set up a central hub in the GCC, let's, let's say in Dubai. You could distribute goods from that hub to anywhere else in the GCC within the span of a few hours. So that means, essentially, you could have same-day delivery of anything you order from that central hub. So let's say we order shoes. I order shoes. I'm in Jeddah, let's say. From Dubai, in a few hours, I'll get my shoes to the delivered to me. Okay, which I guess feeds into uh, the massive growth in e-coms that's predicted in the next few years. If we're going to have this same-day delivery, which people will expect, then you need a means of getting them there. Of course, and and what they everyone at the press conference says is that now that's kind of like a, a customer demand that things happen immediately. You order something, it gets to you. So this is the point. There is a demand for this service. There, there is a there is a huge demand for the service for okay. rapid delivery. Yeah. So let's talk about passengers because this technology can also be used to transport people as well as goods. Well, yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, mo most of the conversations about it so far have been around passengers, but I mean, there's the obvious question of how much that's going to cost someone because you're moving much faster than a traditional rail system, for example. But Virgin Hyperloop One told me that I mean, you'll pay a slight premium for because of the speed at which you're traveling, but it won't be significantly different than any other mode of transport, for example, an airplane. Um, they want it to be a system for everyone, and, and for them, of course, the more people that travel on the Hyperloop, the better, because it's kind of a testament to the system, and it helps you know, fund future projects. Okay, okay. Um, so Richard had some other interesting comments to make about um, other, sort of, well, not fringe benefits, but from having Hyperloop instead of these big ports. Yeah, it, it was interesting. In his remarks, he said, you know, a, a port, for example, in Dubai, it takes up coastal space that could be used for something else, let's say a, a luxury hotel or some sort of leisure destination. So if you built a, a Hyperloop uh, on a small island off the coast of off the coast of Dubai, rather, um, you know the the ship could bring it the goods to the hyperloop, and the hyperloop could very quickly ship it inland, and that would free up that coastal space for really anything. Uh, but his point was that you know that coastal space that's being used for the port could be better used for something else. And I guess that's the same, say, with an airport. You don't have to build an airport in the city if you can very, very quickly take people out the city to the airport. Uh, yeah, and, that, and that, that was his other point. He, for example, if, if there's two airports in the city uh, for passengers, it could, in, du in Dubai's case, it could get you from one airport to the other in six minutes. Uh, you would avoid traffic. You wouldn't have to go through customs again. Uh, all your baggage could go on a separate Hyperloop pod. So, it, I mean, in his words, it, it takes the hassle out of modern travel. Okay. Well, this all sounds fantastic, but how far away is it? N not that far away. I mean, in February, uh, they announced plans that in India, they're going to start uh, experimenting with the Hyperloop. So in, they'll build first a 10 to 15 kilometer track. And they think that within the 2023, 2025 time frame, they could have a working commercial Hyperloop. Um, it's unclear where. It might be in India because they're moving in that direction, but it might be in the UAE, it might be in Saudi Arabia. The, the Crown Prince went to see Virgin Hyperloop One in, in California not long ago. So it could be in either one of the, those three places. Okay, so it's happening, we're just not sure yet. Yeah, well. 
It's happening very soon, but we uh, can't say where just yet. Great. Well, very exciting plans nonetheless. Okay, that's Inside AB. Please do join us every weekday at 10 a.m. Subscribe and share. See you next time.